All right, the time is here. Take advantage. If you're interested in promoting your brand here at Viral Hip Hop News, music, brand, or even yourself, email me, Sam Ant at dlsmediainc1 at gmail.com for more information. Don't wait. Let's go. So, yeah, Judge is in the house. Yes, he is doing what he does best, man. So let's go to work. All right. So, you know, where I wanted to get started. We've seen the uh, the women's NCAA final a couple of weeks ago. And um, then we just recently. You saw it. it. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't see it either. The world saw it. How about we just put it that way? The world saw it. Because I didn't watch it either in particular. But the WNBA draft also happened. And um, a lot of uh, Angel Reese and a lot of different basketball players are coming out doing different things and one jason whitlock who i don't often agree with but he said something that i did agree with and he said that some of these nba basketball players are now bringing it's, it's cool now to be a woman again in the wnba it's now cool to be feminine again in the wnba and that made me think we often talk about masculinity being attacked and i 100 percent believe it is being attacked out here is feminine femininity being attacked right now as well do you think that people are shunning women from being women just as equally as they're shunning men from being men in our culture right now? 55 years ago, 56 years ago, there was a trend that started. Those that hated that there weren't men, the feminists, those that hated men, certain lesbians, those that hated they weren't strong men, the beta boys, those that hated they weren't normal men, the gay boys, and the ones that hated men because they started war. Yeah, man, we got to drop out, man. Yeah, we got to change the way, man. It's like toxic, man. We got to learn love, man, and stop war. Anyway, all that bullshit went on, and they wound up uh, having a situation where color TV was kicking the movie industry in the behind. So they came up with a new format. Instead of every Thursday and Sunday, you had uh, two new movies, which cost a lot of production time and money during a year. And no matter how well they did, they got changed every Thursday and Sunday. They decided that they were going to have one movie. There was a group that was untapped monetarily, and that was the black community. So instead of trying to uplift them, they would appeal to the lowest common denominator, the pimp, hoe, drug dealer, gangster, thug, murderer, rapist, whatever. In other words, lack of fitness, lack of manliness, and that was a good way to attack manhood since the typical white guy about the 60s was coming to ideate, you know, being cool with being black. So if you made being black lame and sissified, then you got your objective to sissify the whole population. And since black music and dancing style and dress style was spreading around the Western world. That was a good way of doing stuff. So, yeah, you got this, but it led to the destruction of the family and it coincided with the Johnson administration coming up with a safety net, which was supposed to provide assistance to women who had babies that found themselves in a bad situation and that got morphed by enterprising little hustlers into having babies to get supported rather than having an emergency support for the babies. So it wasn't long before you had three, four, five, six generations of a family where nobody had finished school or had a job because all they had to do was flat back gap, get knocked up and collect a check. Mm. And that has contributed to our culture. And I want to say something about what you're getting. You can tell because the music is stagnated. How long has hip hop been in popular demand? About 45 years? Absolutely. If you go back and examine the music trends for the last 200 years in the Western world, music stays in vogue for about 10 years before it changes. That included black music. So why is it stagnated for 45 years? 
Mm. See, you got the dynamic of the drive being knocked out. The lyrics have slightly changed, but the sample music's 45, 50 years old. Mm. You play elevator music that's 50 years old, 60 years old, nobody gets offended, even the young folk. You go and you have a party. I went to a club here in Memphis called a rocking chair. Uh, sophisticated ladies gave it. They're middle-aged women. They tended to be a bit overweight. And their shorts were too tight. Uh, but the 55, 60-year-old women were doing the exact same dances that their 15-year-old granddaughters were. So what is that? You know, this isn't, is it, is hip hop become folk dancing now? Or what is it? And it's funny when you start seeing young folk deal with old classical folk dancing, that, you know, that's that kind of thing where some culture gets together and the young folk show the old folk that they can do the old folks dance. Now it's, Everybody from 15 to 75 is doing the same dance to the same music. And everybody's heard the same music, if you call it music and not poetry set to music. So why are we stagnated? Why have we allowed the national entertainment industry to dictate that there are going to be no changes in the music so the young Japanese kids that are seeking what appears to be manhood can do their techno bounce up and down stuff out of tune to the music, but to the same lyrics, to the same hip hop that you have on gangster rap video here in the U.S., which is the same as they're dealing with with a translation under it over in Rome, Paris, Moscow, uh, Praetoria, Sydney, Australia, someplace, or down in Rio. So what what's caused the stagnation of the music? You even, basically the only place you're going to find any new black music is to an extent some variation on reggae, which tends to now morph more into going through soca into American hip hop. So they're losing that art form. So why have we become stagnant? Because we've got an essentially white structure that is paying the tab and calling the shots on what gets put out. Mm. We certainly have the opportunity to produce on our own. We produce the core product, but it doesn't seem to work. And I'll show you the travesty of it. Mm. What person has sold more CDs in a decade than any other recording artist. Not Michael Jackson, no? No, it's not. Mm, I'm, I'm, Taylor I'm, Swift, maybe? I don't know. No, it's not Taylor Swift. It's not <laughs> Frank Sinatra. Who it's not that? even Elvis Presley. Wow. It's Eminem. Mm. That's, yeah, I believe it. Wow. So mm. he's retired. So why is it that we don't even get the ultimate benefit of our own music? But what is it we're lacking here? And then you get to, I'll, I'll illustrate part of the problem that gets to mm. what you're talking about. Mm. It's just awful. These men are sitting there fascinating on dominating women when they get these half naked girls dancing up there gyrating on stage and they've got fantasies <laughs> of masculine dominance you've heard it that's mm. the thing that the feminists do right yeah but the problem is it's not a sexual fantasy you know what's up on the stage uh go out back at the projects 10 years ago and you'd see it it's 80 90 degrees out there that's mama aunt grandmama great grandmama their friend girls booty shorts on titties hanging out of their halter trying to get laid and get another check 
And <clears throat> that's the June Cleaver, except instead of pearls, she's got on some booty shorts and she's running around with a halter on with her fat belly hung over the top of her, whatever she's got on that's too small for her. Drinking a 40 ounce, smoking a blunt maybe or something and sitting out there hanging. Mm -hmm. So if you deal with Oedipus, you know, yeah, okay, fine. But that's not a sexual fantasy. That's just the reality. The ideation, what you doing on a typical rap thing? Man, my bitches and hoes taking care of me. I got good game, man. It's all the same. My hoes, they be laying down, you know, so I don't have to deal with the cloud, you know. It's all about, and what is it that they've done to masculine images? See, human males that are adjusted, I don't care what color you are, all over the planet, have been about providing, protecting, and leading. And what we're doing is we're playing fucking male hoe, gigolo. Mm. My bitches take care of me. I got four ladies take care of me. Look, two of them got good GOBs. One get a crazy chick. One of them hoes, you know, uh, she get AFDC. They takes care of me. What you doing, dude? Sound like you a gold digging little gigolo uh, bitch pimp, you know. Who's your pimp? See, and we had a, it's about pimping, man. And the actual truth of the matter is, is until things got turned around in a penitentiary, the category of person is giving up more head and getting butt fucked more than anybody else, except for the convicted pedophiles were the pimps. Mm, wow. See, so now we had a, oh man, it's about pimping, man. You want to be one of those fucked up folk? to suck all that dick up in the penitentiary and half the time out there in the vacant apartments in the projects too. Mm. Wow. I used to represent a lot of pimps, hoes, and dancers. It's a sick game. Wow. But we have the ideation now where we've got that P Valley, Pussy Valley. And 40 years ago, I used to represent a lot of ladies that dance down there. And that thing about that, freak boy that manages the club likes to suck more dick than the babes up in there that was a reality too so mm. you know is be careful what you're looking at you look you sagged and bagged where the hell did that bullshit get to be a style first time i saw that was exactly 44 years ago almost not exactly it soon will be it was mm. july 7th to 1980 my law wow. partner had died and i was taking over some of his cases and i was up at the main penitentiary in nashville some dude walked by sag bagged and dragged and i'm looking at like man what the hell is that shit because all of the rest of the folk they can't wear belts so they have these real well tailored jeans you know they fit they looking like they're in uniform and then I'm looking at a dude with his shit hung off his ass. He said, oh, man, Lord, man, like this, man, those of us up here doing life and long time, we got everything we need except some soft booties. So we making us some man pussy over there. So we make mm. them wear down like that loose. And see, when the guards ain't around, we make them bend them down, pull them down, and get down. If he try to run, he fall because he goes to his ankles and he trips up his booty up in the air. See, we don't care. We take them on the cell block. We make him take his pants off. Don't let him wear no panties in that baggy shirt. That'd be his dress. We'd be fucking hell out of him. So he don't even have to feel no pain. Don't even need no KY to get it in. And oh, see, God. we done they made him some jewelry off in metal shop. And Jamal, he used to rid off to his baby sis. She done sent a care package with some rouge, mascara, eyeshadow, lipstick. He has some plastic nails. Yeah, we gonna girl this motherfucker out, boy. So wow. by 1982 or three, crisscross came on. It got popular and they started wearing the kind of shit like they just got out the penitentiary. And it started spreading. By the time you got to the 1990s, instead of just, just something for everybody to fuck, that was a sign in the joint that, you know, this dude belongs. 
belongs to somebody. I'd been practicing criminal law for a long time. And I knew it. And what was coming out of the penitentiaries, not everybody, but a whole bunch. You represent a guy from the time he's 15, 16, little hard-headed juvenile, and his mama's paying the fee. He gets 18, 19. Now he got three ladies paying it for him. He does his first time, does a year and a half, comes out two years. He's coming up to your office, you know. He said, well, yeah, my, you know, I have your fee up here. And this time, instead of having two or three ladies, he got two or three queers coming up there paying the fee in one woman. <laughs> Uh, a month later, the, the girl comes back. Lord, man, I want my money back. She said, sorry, baby, I've signed the jacket. But it ain't right. He got them them gay boys right down at the end of the hall. He be coming back here stealing my coat text because his ass be bleeding. And, you know, like, hey, that's him. And see, to get to perpetrating about masculinity, but the whole deal is, is you tear it down with us, and then everybody just starts copying us, thinking, yeah, you know, hey, man, you know, the black guys, man, you know, uh, those African Americans, man, you know, they got it going on, man, you got to go like that, man. <laughs> so they start copying that. And then we go to WNBA. And mm -hmm. the thing about WNBA, and I laugh about it because I know one girl. She's pretty, beautiful, but she's got a unique distinction. She was married to an NBA player, and then she got married to a WNBA player, divorced <laughs> both of them, and got big money. Candace I Park. keep telling her, you got a book. You know, so bottom line is, is that she used to laugh about this. She said, well, I can't tell the difference from the rear. The boys and the girls look the same. The girls got those long knee length shorts. that makes them look like boys. They got the narrow hips and mm. the boys and the girls wearing the same hairstyle. You can't tell who the hell is what from the rear. And now I got another perspective. I've been taking martial arts for 58 years. And my brother was at one time listed by Black Belt Magazine as probably the most dangerous human alive in North America. Look him up. His name is Clifford Stewart of Los Angeles. They listed him as bodyguard for the stars and his clients included Muhammad Ali, including when he had Thriller in the Manila, uh, Thriller in Manila. Uh, Mr. T, Wesley Snipes, Larry Flint of Hustlers Magazine, the shape that was in charge with counterintelligence for Saudi Arabia, you name it, also a brilliant man. And I look at these guys now and I say, I can break your neck very easy. Thanks for that, the way you got your head dealt with. That's a nice handle, just a little this down that twist and you did. Okay, this, okay, wow, man, you leave yourself wide open. See, this is a nice little, uh, you know, when you do judo and jujitsu, you have the geese on so you can practice the throws with alacrity and nothing will tear. So, man, the way you're dressed, you make it real easy to put you down, break some ribs here. Uh, your leg's gone. You're dead in 15, 20 seconds, or it might take you 30 minutes, 30 seconds, 30 minutes to figure it out. And go ahead and croak because you've already been done. Didn't even know it. So we used to deal with, if you're going to be this, that, and the other, you got to be, what is it, back in the 60s, are you ready for the revolution? And nowadays, I'm looking at folk that have the shoes, the wrong kind of shoes, they can't run in them, the pants about to fall off the ass, they look like they want to drop them, bend over, and get do the 6B routine, which is unbelt, drop britches, drop boxes, bend over, spread butt cheeks, get boy banged. And, you know, that, that seems to be the way of doing things these days. I don't know what happened to manhood. And then the ideation. I've never heard what I hear now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I heard, I, I'm 77 years old this year. All right. So 
my father was born in 1910. My maternal grandfather was born in 1850. He lived to be in his hundreds. I had another grandfather on the father's side who was a preacher. He made it over a hundred. He was born back in the 19th century. All my uncles and I had a bunch of them. They all prided themselves as black men on being able to take care of their families and their women and being in charge. They understood there was a thing called racism, adversity, but they learned to kick ass. Hell, I had a grandfather, my maternal grandfather, he and another uncle murdered two deputies uh, because the deputies they thought were participating, had participating in a lynching of another brother. So they worked around that shit. You didn't hear them talking about, oh, man, they holding me down, man. White supremacy. Fuck that shit. It's like, it's adversity, man. If we're supposed to be killing Simba with a wooden spear, no iron head before we get out of 13, and nobody there with us to take on this 450-pound predator, what the hell is wrong with us when we can't even deal with some acid that isn't anywhere near as bad now as it used to be. So it's like I'm doing a thing on X space in a while. It's called WS and BS. Is it white supremacy, print supremacy, WS, or is it black stupidity, BS, that holds mm. us down? Mm. See, and by the way, I do this thing with Dana Cumberland, the real Dana. We do it on Monday and Thursday and this other thing on tuesday the twitter space the idea is to provoke she's kind of my stepdaughter so to speak so we play this game back and forth but the whole point is to get people to think mm -hmm. and also to show that you don't have to get all weirded out because a woman is not agreeing with you. You work around it and that's part of the demonstration, but it is this thing we have got to do. So you look at the WNBA and my question is, so what now mm. I hate to down the ladies, but the ladies are doing a piss poor job about being mothers these days. I'm getting on a cousin of mine for raising another cousin of mine. And what she's attempting to do is she went to Hawaii and she got into hula. So she's teaching grandson hula. Now, mm -hmm. if you see the Hawaiians do it, they don't sway hips when they're guys. The hula that the guys do is ferocious they make all of these snarling faces and they flex and they do war moves and what the deal is is it comes from a time when they pulled up on the beach in their war canoes and they faced off against the people that lived at that part of the island and the people on the island was do you want to fight and they're going do we want to fight and then the people on the island say, do we kill you? And then they do this, wow, you know, and they go through their moves and stuff mm -hmm. and their katas and so forth. And they say, ah, you, you look like you can kick some ass. We don't mind you coming in the family. Come on. We'll have a good time. You can fuck all the babes you want because we want genetic diversity. So we'll visit your island. You know, we get some side nookie too. Come on, dudes. Let's have a good time. Now they want to get the boys up there swaying like they're girls. And if you go to Hawaii, you know, all of these hula demonstrations, girls look great, but you never see the guys doing that. But American women go over there and take their sons and they want to teach them hula because it looks so cute. Uh, one of my nieces, she's 60 years old. She said, don't you dare do that. Unk, don't do it. I said, ma'am, excuse me. She says, Excuse me, ma'am, uh, your, your child is so cute. And the woman said, thank you. And then I had to say, let me ask you something. Is that a boy or a girl? Don't you think he's cute? I said, it's a boy. Yeah, but he's so cute. And I said, I knew it. Like, why in the hell are you worried about getting a boy pretty and you got a bun on his head and some stud earrings 
and you got him dressed up in pink, what the hell is the matter with you? It's hard enough being a man if you really focus on it. You can't afford to distract a boy child with Mm. frivolity and expect him to grow up to be a man. And I always get on these folks. I say, look, let me ask you something. What good's a man for? I don't know. Man ain't good for shit, honey. I hear you. I said, well, then that's the problem. How are you going to raise your boy to be a man? I know what I want. He's going to be a man. How are you going to raise him to be a man if you don't know what the hell a man is good for? Mm. Ooh. You see, so it's this ideation we have. We think like we are gold digging women. Who's going to take care of us? Not who do we take care of? See, a man is judged by his power. Power is reflected by how much business you can take care of. And it ain't about just fucking and having a bunch of outside babies. I used, 30 years ago, I started getting folk. I was sentenced and checked out. And the guys that had all these outside babies, guess what the shrinks would come back with? Say, dude, is not confident in his masculinity. So he's trying to prove by the number of babies he has that he's a man because he doesn't feel confident in doing those things that men do. Wow. I said, yeah, that's, that's interesting. So deep down inside, you say a lot about yourself when you do it. That N word too. Yeah, man, you won't be a real nigga. You got to be a nigga, man. You know, like, why you say that about yourself? Man, it's friendly. No, it's not. Shrink will tell you. You know what it means. Your subconscious mean, knows what it means. And when you use that word to talk about yourself and your friends, you're really telling yourself, you ain't shit, man. You know you ain't shit. You ain't done a goddamn thing. You messed up, wasted your time. I'm in high school. You ain't got no job, man. You don't want to work. You don't know what the hell your ass is going to do or what it's about. You don't think shit of yourself. That's why you're calling yourself the N-word. We can have all the rationalizations we want, but our subconscious is know what the word means. And when you use it and you start trying to fool yourself by saying it's friendly, it's not. You're talking about yourself. You're looking in the mirror and saying, man, you ain't shit, man. Why don't you do better? Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like knowledge is a pitch, man, but I'm looking at women's basketball. So what? When are you going to start being good mamas and focus on that and motherhood and bestowing peace in the community instead of going around acting like girl realers trash in the place rather worse than your sons are? Hmm. Right. See, if I want to see a goddamn girl, really, I'll see a gorilla and go to the goddamn zoo. Hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it used to be in my day, man. Hey, man, watch out, man. A woman walked in, man. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't see you. Or, hey, man, dude's mama just came in. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. We didn't mean to be to, to use that language. Now, Helfer walks off in there and she was more vulgar than anybody else talking about who, how much ass she can kick instead of trying to bring peace. So that's not the thing. It's like, if you're going to be a man, you can be all the athletes you want. You can rationalize it by saying that once was a preparation for hunting and for war, but you still are supposed to be about the business of taking care of where you live your neighborhood, making it a better, safer, more secure place filled with economic prosperity, sense of purpose, morality, ethics, dealing with public peace, dignity, and order, and being brave and courageous about things, did you, if you got spare time, do the rest of it. So if the ladies want to start prepping to be mamas and dealing with the other side of the human race, you know, that yin yang thing, the circle with the black right. teardrop on one side and the white on the other, where it's mm-hmm. thin against the thick, meaning uh, the women can do a little of this guys can do a lot and vice versa over there. And then there's some things well neither can do uh, that's reality. That's called yin yang or yin yang, the balance. Right. And when it gets out of balance, it's all messed up. It doesn't work. And nobody's peaceful. So you walk down the street, man, and my father, my uncles, my grandparents, my great uncles, 
everybody I knew, man, if you were a dude, you were into girl watching. That's right. All the ladies, they were into boy watching. And I used to have a, well, she's dead now. First ex-mother-in-law, she had a beauty salon. And I used to have to go over there and help out, man. I'd get up in there and the ladies in them bags, girl, you see his package? Woo, girl, want me some of that? Wait, time out. Let me leave, ladies. I'm out of here. You know, and they watched the guys too. And we said, hey, man, check that out, man. Woo, shit, look at that. Now, it's like a friend of mine was telling me, hey, Joe, man, I was in, you know, VIP lounge, Delta, you know, Sky Lounge, you know, red carpet, whatever the hell they call it. I was in Atlanta airport, man. I saw the fattest looking woman I'd ever laid eyes on. I got enough of a nerve to go over and say something. Turned out to be a goddamn boy, man. Shit. Dang. No way. See, what the <laughs> hell? Yeah. You know, We've got these courtship rituals. Birds have them, you know, lions have them, tigers have them, elephants have them, yep. uh, whales have them, alligators and shit got them, you know, dog <laughs> wolves have them, yeah. and humans have them, and now they messed that up, so they screwed it up. It's like they don't have a stake in tomorrow because somehow or another they got fucked up in their heads and <laughs> You know, I'm looking at it as it used to be when I was younger. I'm a man, damn, let me not embarrass myself. Shit. You know, <laughs> and these dudes likely yeah. to get a hard on looking at you instead uh, of at the women. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it, it's crazy. I know one guy got in trouble. He was up in a, and by the way, it's illegal now. That so-called Emmett Till anti-lynch bill doesn't even require anybody to die. It doesn't require a mob. It can be one person and a one blow. And what's going on is what happens a lot around here. This poor guy broke up with his old lady. He was in a bar. And he was drinking on a club. And it was what he thought was a PYT. She looked trim, had all the curves and swerve, a little on the slender side, nice. And, you know, hair done up and all the makeup. And they got the dancing and exchanging spit over in the shadows. They did the damn thing, got a hard on. See, man, what the oh, shit. No. no. Busted it right <laughs> in the jaw. I mean, he couldn't help himself. But well, now they're yeah. called lynching under the federal uh, anti-lynch bill called the Emmett Till anti-lynch bill. That's now called lynching. Wow. So the FBI would come in on it. So it's crazy what's been done. They even have a new move afoot on the East Coast to make it a felony rape by seduction. What the hell does that mean? Mm -hmm. It means you go out, you and your lady friend have a nice time, wine, candlelight, dinner. Mm -hmm. springtime walk in the park holding hands your place of mind you go over there things led to things clothes come off and everybody has a good time these stupid idiots call that rape by seduction because the woman was seduced and her will to resist got taken away like what the hell where have you been in life that's how this shit works right you know? <laughs> right so Damn. what is your problem now uh you're supposed to i guess the way they do it hey baby uh you look very good i'd like to have sex with you but i'll take you to dinner if you want before we have sex and we can go do the candlelight and walk in the park your place of mine but we are going to have sex is that okay hell your ass ain't gonna get and then the goddamn look at that way. What the hell is the matter with food? It doesn't work. Right. Mm. So uh, they want to yeah. upset yeah. human nature. And then yeah. they're trying to make that the reality. So I'm looking at Griner. What, what's the tall babe that played basketball over in Russia and got busted for carrying what in America would be a felony amount of cannabis oil? By the way, when it's refined, it ain't quite the same 
is leaf marijuana, which is still against federal law, even though it may be okay with state law. So this right. chick goes through an international airport, an international airport. She's mm-hmm. been there a whole bunch of times because she gets paid more by the Russians to play b-ball than she did over here. And she gets busted for felony possession of not cannabis oil. They call it, guess what, hash oil. Wow. And hash is a hell of a lot more important than just weed, you know, so she gets busted. So what do we do? We trade the merchant of death for a hack basketball <laughs> player who got caught taking some hash oil through an international security checkpoint like a damn fool. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. What is this? We have American spies and operators over there been up in jail for years that we could have traded for this guy. Do we do it? No, we get it for some. Who cares? You know, (laughs) WNBA wouldn't operate if it wasn't for the subsidy that the NBA pays them. them. Thanks. So what are we doing? And then let's talk basketball. I'm friends mm-hmm. with Magic Johnson, known his family for a long, 35 years. Uh, his mother and I talk. Father died this year. Uh, one of her best girlfriends is the sister of a good friend of mine. Uh, Magic has always been about business. He would play basketball to get a financial stake to launch business all right he introduced me to michael jordan one time same thing uh it's about business i know kareem abdul jabbar the goat for the nba he and i were classmates at ucla he's a scholar he had a b plus average in engineering and every time you saw him he always had a long slide rule clip to his belt that was before they came up with small calculators and let alone cell phones that was like some magic out of star trek um but they were about taking care of business uh i remember one thing uh i was at ucla and ucla get this in ncaa play was undefeated for seven straight years Mm. and they had um the coach out there. Woody, Woody something? Woody, he, Woody. Wooten, Wooten. Yeah. I did a documentary for uh, about him one time for, I forgot what the network was. And I played football and we'd come in after football practice and watch him play basketball. And Wooten said, you are here as students first, basketball players second. I expect everybody on my team to maintain a B average or you don't play because I don't want stupid basketball players. I want students who are good students who happen to be able to play basketball. And I mean, to this day, I get bored with most basketball games. We used to, I remember one game I was at, it was 152 to 79 UCLA. We would walk out if it wasn't, you know, 75, 80 points at halftime. We expected the game to be 110, 120. They played like they practiced, charge up and down the court full speed. What they play now, we used to call prevent defense and stall offense Mm -hmm. so i'm looking at this thing i'm old man took me to see the first laker game in la uh season uh game and uh elgin baylor and all that bunch were playing and they charged up and down the field i saw kareem my classmate play and he did what he did uh, all through his basketball career, sky hook and everything. Uh, and now I look at the players, they get played a lot more money and they lope down the field like they're tired and they're bored and everything else. And 
you know, you get a playoff and nobody breaks 90 points, we would have walked out on that. Uh, yeah. I saw Will Chamberlain play, and Will Chamberlain all by himself on two occasions scored more than 100 points in a game. Yeah. So I'm looking at what you have now. Yeah, really? Okay. And by the way, they didn't have three-point plays then. They were all two points. So just think of somebody scoring, and I think he scored 109 and 111 points under two games. He got more than 100 all by himself. So, yeah, what are we doing here? And then we distract this. We got to go watch the ladies because they want to be watched. And nobody's promoting them to be good mothers, just like nobody's promoting the boys to be men and take care of their business like they used to. Like Coach Wooten would say, your job is to be a student because you are preparing for the rest of your life, even if you play pro basketball like so many of my former players do. There's more to life after basketball. So what are you preparing yourself to do? I want men. Yes, sir. And interestingly enough, the dean of students at the UCLA Law School was Fred Slaughter. Fred Slaughter had been the sitter for UCLA on one of his undefeated basketball teams. Fred was 6'9", going on 10, and by the time he was Dean, he was like 380 pounds. Mm -hmm. I remember some clown was acting a fool up in the meeting. We had student faculty. Fred grabbed this dude by one hand, yanked him up from across the table, and was holding him up like that, and his feet were about this high off the table. Said, oh, to break your damn jaw. <laughs> Dean, Dean, don't do it. Don't do it. It ain't worth it, you know. So there were episodes and outlooks. And one thing that was happening in the 60s was the NOM. You did not want a 1A classification. Really? Hmm. You wanted 2A. Okay. So we didn't have tuition at state-run schools then colleges and universities so it didn't cost you anything so everybody stayed in school so you got all of the radicalist radicalism yeah you got all the badasses they were in school they wanted that 2a so everybody was getting an education and kind of got upper, upwardly mobile nowadays nobody wants to go to school and the people that do get in the back door and they tend to be little boule bitches that don't know what the hell masculinity is about either because they're running around trying to be too damn soft. And we got a whole lot of folk that I just wanted to vomit every time I saw them over the years. They were holding themselves out as black leaders. And when the time to do that was around, Brother, we got to go, man. Brothers, excuse me. It's not that I don't appreciate all of the sacrifices that you've made for me and the times all of you have gone to jail, but I can't afford to jeopardize my career. You'll have to go on without me, but I'll be there with you in spirit. Crab that fool. And I remember one guy that used to be an advisor to several presidents on black men in militancy. He had to be drugged to the location. He had on some gray slacks and some tan shoes. And he got so scared, he pissed all over himself. You could see the stain going down his left pant leg and a big puddle of piss around his left foot and stained his tan shoes. And the brothers holding him said, God damn, man, dropped him. And he fell down in his own piss. He was too scared to get up for three or four minutes. So he got piss all over his hands in front of his shirt. And he got up and spread it away. Now, you listen to this guy in future years. He's dead now. Uh, he would used to talk about, yes, I was part of the militant movement. Damn, fool. You pipped it. And that's the problem. 
we and i'm going off on something else we need some black heroes yes sir can you name me a black hero now no umar yeah, anybody, johnson. what's that yeah. umar johnson uh -oh. no is he risking death no no is he uh -huh. getting paid for what he does yes yes sir. that's not being a hero you got to risk it either a whole real big financial chunk or you have to risk your life now i know uh -huh. some people like that and there are a lot of unsung heroes in the movement and then some that most have heard of but they aren't made heroes because they are suppressed some right. that were okay and now being made villains and heard everybody ever heard of h rap brown yep mm -hmm. used to pull out a book of matches black man in america confess consequence you can get them in any department store, any grocery store, any drug store, any movie house, anywhere you go, and he'd reach in and pull out a book of matches. Burn, baby, burn, burn a motherfucker down if you have to. Mm. Now, they don't want that. No. And see, they have bad mouthed some people and they've made some other people in the heroes. Like, for example, right now, W.E.B. Du Bois is not somebody that a lot of young black folk admire, but they admire Booker T. Washington. But we didn't like Booker T. Washington. We like W.E.B. Du Bois. Mm -hmm. You know what the difference would be? W.B. Du Bois was the equivalent of an H. Rap Brown earlier. And you know who is a direct matchup for Booker T. Washington and probably will be treated that way in another 50 years? Al Sharpton. Really? Yeah. So I remember my father, grandfather, uncles, all their homeboys. I didn't run into a black man that could stand Booker T. Washington because he sold out so many young black folk. And he was saying, pick up the mop, pick up the pail. W.E.B. Du Bois was the hell with that subservient shit. Take charge. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then look at it this way. I'll just give you, I'm not downing the brother. I mean, it was his time. He chose his way, but he wasn't Al Sharpton. And it's like this. It's a hundred years ago. Every big city or uh, municipality in the South had a Booker T. Washington school. Why do you think those racist white folk named the school after Booker T. Washington? Yeah. I mean, wow. Do you think he was doing anything about the struggle intensifying and black folk really getting put in charge? No, he was saying be subservient. And in several generations, your great grandchildren might get a chance to better themselves based on the gratitude of America for them being so complacent and compliant and helpful. Huh. See, right. All right. They want to blame, for example, Reverend Jesse Jackson for King dying. It wasn't Jackson. It was uh, Reverend Billy Kyles, who was the inside informant. Um, but Jesse Jackson was a threat, so it makes it easier if you can discredit him. Um, mm -hmm. I was the last judge on the King James Earl Ray thing. Right. And I learned some things. By the way, it was the FBI planned it, plotted it, supplied the murder weapon and the ammunition, and it wasn't Ray's rifle that got excluded when I had it retested. And if shot didn't come from the flop house or the bushes, it came from the fire station. It was a two man team. It was recruited from the Quantico Marine base where they had a sniper school, which was right across the way from the FBI training academy that was located on the same in the same facility. And they recruited a two man team. They supplied a modified M14, the ammunition, everything set the place up, measured all the distances. They killed King. 
And uh, Kyle's was the inside man on the deal. So they had an in on Kyle's and Dick Gregory, who was a friend of mine. I still have his number in my phone. Well, yeah. phone. We talked and we discussed something. He said, I'm going to interview Kyle's. Any suggestions? I said, I know you can trap him. And I told him some things, reminded him since we had discussed them over the years. So he asked Kyle's this. He said, Reverend, when you escorted Dr. King out on the balcony, why did you duck back into the building? He said, I didn't want to get shot. He said, you didn't want to get shot. How did you know there was going to be a shot? Well, uh, uh, uh-huh. I just figured something might happen. <laughs> Told on so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now we blame Jesse Jackson. So I sat next to Jackson on a flight going to Chicago one time, and we talked about it. He said, if there's anything I can do, we, let me know we need to get to the bottom of it. I talked to Reverend Lowry. He said the same thing, too. I talked to Reverend Ben Hooks. His comment, let sleeping dogs lie. I wow. talked to wow. uh, Billy Kyles. He said, let sleeping dogs lie. Another couple of suspects I had, they all said the same thing. Exactly. The same quote, let sleeping dogs lie. The people that I didn't have a suspicion for said, we need to get to the bottom of this. Is that what you got out of it? I said, yeah. So, see, there's all kinds of misinformation applied. By the way, interesting thing, uh, the Memphis Police Department's homicide squad insisted Ray was not the killer, said he couldn't have been. We know where he was. He was not even in Memphis on the day. But the DA's office insisted on going after Ray. And even when the case was in my courtroom 28 years ago, they wanted it stopped because they didn't want the information developed as to what actually happened because too many of them associated with that office had a connection with what went down. Okay. And believe me, there were a lot of black people complicit in what happened to King. See, some people didn't even want King to come back. King was staying at a place called the Rivermont. The Rivermont was the flagship hotel for the Holiday Inn chain, and Holiday Inn was founded in and located company headquarters wise in Memphis at the time. So he literally was integrating the place. The Lorraine Motel at the time was part of the hoe track. It was hourly rate and all the hoes turned their tricks over there. So a lot of people said, why in the devil do you want Dr. King in a hoe house, hoe establishment? He needs to be seen in the neighborhood. Well, he started not to come back, but he did. And some of the black folk were just adamantly against King coming. Some said, we don't need him. We can do it ourselves. Some said their white sponsors said, no way, no how. We can't have King coming up in here. And some people said they didn't care. It even devolved into a thing where at an NAACP meeting, prior to him returning, uh, the colored folk, Negroes, uh, pulled guns on each other about whether King was going to come back or not. So he came back and he got gunned down on the balcony of the local whole track prime time facility. Right. Now, It's interesting what we do to ourselves. So we are doing that right now. Like, who is supposed to be a black leader? Forget black hero. Who are our leaders supposed to be? Right. Who? We don't have any. We don't have any. (laughs) We got chicken. We have chicken enemy number one, Al Sharpton. They're trying to make him another book of tea. Mm. But... And look what they're doing. 
See, 50 plus years ago, more than 50 years ago, I was with this DC think tank as an intern and I had to research these so-called slave pamphlets on microfilm in the Library of Congress. I would say you could title them now as how to raise slaves for fun and profit. It's sort of infomercials in print. They consistently had a theme. The way to do it is never ever deal with black males as somebody in charge of other black folk even if he's your favorite hunt boy, gun boy, carriage driver, groom, butler, valet, don't deal with him. Deal with a mammy and get a comely wench to be a bed wench. If she's good, she can entertain your guest in the plantation or in your townhouse and you can learn a lot of information elevate her if she is a good bed wench so she goes to your third floor which was third floor bed wench which they had these multi-story townhouses and a big plantation had three floors and when your third floor bed wench who is real good gets gray at the roots make her your chief mammy and let her run your women white women because they'll listen to her and make sure she's the one that's in control of the Negroes. So who do we see right now that the Democratic Party is selecting the leaders? Mammies. Uh, You have Beetlejuice, a.k.a. Lori Lightfoot. You've got (laughs) Letitia James. You've got Fannie Willis down in Georgia. You've got... uh, Oh, Maxine Waters types. You have uh, uh, Stacey Abrams types. Mm-hmm. You get it. She go find you a mammy to run the Negras. Right. Uh, never have a man unless he a mammy too. You know, I guess that's that trans thing like uh Al Sharpton and Cory Booker and that bunch. Uh, but mm-hmm. always get you a mammy to deal with black men and keep them in the place. And see, uh, remember 2020, take your booties to the pole? Mm-hmm. Wow. I interviewed the director of that. She got mad at me turns out one third of the people in that damn thing weren't even women they were trannies so they're flashing their bare asses up there and that's supposed to make you go vote what kind of goddamn fool are you supposed to be that that is what like you have no damn sense right hey yeah so we have to transcend that and black men have always been hard workers We've been brave and courageous to a fault. We've been intelligent, but Mm -hmm. we don't do what we ought to do now because we're being conditioned by the wrong things that are getting put in our head, and it's up to us to get them out. And I've lost, you know, I'm retired, but hell, I lost a million and a half a year in income because I won't close my mouth. Uh, it yeah. just is what it is. You have to make sacrifices. Now, yeah. we have to do our thing because it's interesting how you get people to turn around. I had over a 10-year period, they did this study, a reduction in the statewide felony recidivism rate, that's repeat offenders, from mm-hmm. 80% down to 18. You know what the secret was? Take the brother and give him a cause and a purpose. So it's like, man, don't worry about it. There ain't no daylight at the end of your tunnel. That gives you a chance to be a hero, to get the people you're responsible for to the end of the tunnel, even if they you die in the process. At least you'll be a hero because you already think you're dead anyway because you don't have anything to live for. 
And mm. see, we do all kinds of crazy shit because we want to die because we don't have something to live for. You right. ever heard of suicide by cop? Mm-hmm. You ever heard of that? Mm-hmm. Okay, what mm. it means is you want to die, so you don't, you're scared to put the pistol to your own head. So you go provoke a cop into doing you the favor of killing yourself. Well, we also have suicide by neighbor. Hey, man, Earl, check this out, man. Stop watching this shit, man. Hey, man, what you looking at, man? Hey, Mm -hmm. man, you in the blue. What you looking at, man? What you mean? What am I asking? What are you you looking at? You, You looking at me, man? I don't care about your damn J-O-B, man. I ain't never had one of them MF, man. So where you going? I don't care you on the bus, man. Don't be looking at me. Watch this stuff. Check this out, man. Hey, man. Now what you going to do, man? Mm-hmm. See, I don't appreciate nobody looking at me like that, man. You think I'm strange, man? Look, brother, I ain't looking at you, man. Why don't you go about your business? Nah, man. You don't tell me what the hell I'm going to do, man. Fuck you, man. I do what I want. Don't move up on me, young brother, like that. Man, I do what the hell I'm going to do, man. Mm-hmm. Don't move up on me like that. Oh, what, what you going to I... <laughs> Can you see this? You still there? Can't hear you. Went off for a minute. <laughs> Got a phone call. We can't hear you. Can't hear you, brother. Yep. Back on. Okay. Um, there we go. All right. I got a question for you, though, if you want to pick sure, that up. Sure, go here. In the, new, in the news, man, we see this whole situation, Um, you know, being a former litigator, judge with Diddy. What's your thoughts on that whole? I know it's a lot to unravel with that. It's been a lot of speculation, civil suits. Then his house was raided a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you've been following him. What's your thoughts? Oh, yeah. I, I, I find it interesting. First thing, who raided him? The um, Homeland, Homeland Security? Security? Yeah. Yeah. What's Homeland Security got to do jurisdictionally with what they claim to have raided him for? Homeland Security deals with international terror and uh, and domestic terrorism. Right. Natural and man-made disasters that come out of stuff like there was a storm, tornado, hurricane, or somebody took down the Twin Towers. It deals with customs, immigration, and border security. Mm -hmm. What the hell does that have to do with sex trafficking? Then there's another thing. Did anybody pay attention to what they raided or search, served a search warrant on? They served a search warrant on one of his mansions on the West Coast, right? Yes, sir. They served one on his Florida mansion, right? Correct. Why didn't they serve a search warrant on his second mansion on the same lot in Florida? Why search just one of them? I didn't know he had another. Wow. Yeah, he did. (laughs) So they walk out of there with a moderate-sized cardboard box, not a big one, and a moderate-sized trash bag, not a big one. So what is it they seize that can fit in that? Electronics, computers, tablets. Hard drives. No, I wouldn't say hard drives. Might be some video uh, recording devices, some yeah. thumb drives, such right. like. Right. And uh, they ended, They talked to him at the airport and let him get on a plane and go to some place that does not have an extradition treaty. What are they after? And by the way, the FBI was there. They have the jurisdiction. They started off uh, dealing with interstate trafficking of women because they were trying to get Jack Johnson. That's how the FBI got started before World War I to come up with what is now known as the Mann Act, which they most recently got R. Kelly under. So that's their bailiwick. That's why the FBI started was to get black folk 
black men caught up in trafficking white women across state lines. Wow. Now, why did the FBI pull off that search warrant? And by the way, they still haven't come up with anything out of it. So you see stuff, what are you just doing, sitting on it? Right. Now, think about it. You've seen the list of some of the people that are supposed to have been there. Did they just go in there and use that as a pretext to seize, say, very condemning information on somebody so one of their guys doesn't have to go through what Trump is going through with this idiot Letitia and her boys and Bragg up in New York? Mm. By the way, look at what they're doing with Trump with Bragg. He supposedly bribed Stormy Daniels to remain silent. Right? Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that unless you bribe somebody not to do something that they had a legal obligation to do. But if you have to pay somebody to keep from embarrassing you, what happened to you? You got blackmailed. So in other words, they indicted the victim of felony blackmail, not the blackmailer. Wow. Okay. The company didn't make a full report, but there was a gag order because the woman cleaned it up by filing an action. So as part of the settlement, the company is supposed to keep their mouth shut. And if they had made the disclosure that Bragg says they should have made, then they would be violating a court order. So you have a company indicted for following the law and you have an individual be, who was indicted for being a victim of a felony under the law. Mm. See how that works? In other yeah. words, it's not going to stick on appeal whether there's a lower court conviction or not. It's We decided we're going to tie this up so we snatch it from the American public. Now, even if you don't like Trump, think about it. We're black men. Think of how fucked up things are the way we get treated. Now, if they can do that to a former president of the United States who is leading in all of the damn polls, what yeah. can they do to the rest of us? Man, anything they want. What they doing? need to get him. He's a criminal. And he's going to be. Fool, do you understand what you're asking for? Right. Look what they did to Bill Cosby. When that first happened, I said, there's no way, no how this is going to stand on appeal because they violated the hell out of Dr. Cosby's. Fifth Amendment rights. There is no way they can stand up. The judge took almost a year to return something he only had 60 days to come up with as a report to go up on appeal. Wow. They kept offering Dr. Cosby a deal that if he would just fess up, they'd get him out of jail before the week was out. He said, hell no. Yeah, that's true. Wow. Gangsters up in the jail took care of him. So anyway, what happens? The Court of Appeals said, hell no, you violated the devil out of the Fifth Amendment. You can't go in there and he, he's exercising his Fifth Amendment. And one district attorney says we grant him immunity so he can be compelled to give evidence in a civil case that might incriminate him, might not, but you can't make him give it if there's a pending criminal case. So when one DA says there's not, and he gives the evidence, you can't get a new DA saying we revoked the offer. We're going to use it as part of our prosecution. No way in hell. So that's what they're doing here in New York. And then the other thing that they had, well, not here, but in New York, the other thing they're doing with this thing about the civil fine, uh, 170 some million dollar bond that Letitia doesn't want the bonding, well, the insurance company to put up. Well, they do it all the time. Mm. And the deal is, is there's no victim. What they have done is jack around every homeowner by this ruling, by this crank idiot that's the judge, the pencil neck little dork up in there. Uh, and what it's about is, okay, you go into a bank and you want to start a business, so you want a second mortgage on your home right? Mm -hmm. 
So you say my house is worth seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Somebody else says no, it's only worth six hundred thousand. You say no, it's seven hundred and fifty thousand. So under the theory of what they went after Trump under, you'd be violating the law by claiming seven hundred and fifty thousand rather than oh, it is right. They know it's better than me. It's only six hundred thousand. But the bank said we didn't rely upon his representation anyway. We did our own independent investigation. We were satisfied with the value of the properties put up with collateral. We got our money when we were supposed to get our money. That's like me saying, Judge Joe wrote you a a bad check. What bad check? I took it to his bank, presented it. They gave me the cash that it was written out for. I didn't get any bad check. Yes, you did. We say you did. (laughs) <laughs> so this idiot has a verdict that he delivered not based on the evidence because there was not one shred of evidence to support what Trump was found liable for. The only thing in front of the court was the statement of Letitia that this was the case. And as a judge charges the jury, ladies and gentlemen, the jury, the statements and remarks and arguments of counsel are not the law, nor are they evidence. They're just designed to assist you in interpreting the evidence which has been presented to you from the witness stand or by stipulation and interpreting the law that will be given to you by the court. There was no evidence. Like, for example, Pencil Neck decides he's going to say Mel Argo's only worth $13 million. It's mm-hmm. in Florida. The cheapest damn undeveloped smallest lot around the damn place is 10 million. A lot of them are undeveloped going for 20 and 30 million. And they got $85 million houses around the place. You're talking about this internationally famous country club is only worth 13 million. You're a damn fool. So there was no proof that that's what it was limited to. So the interesting thing is there is no victim. And the difference between New York law and federal law is that in federal law, there actually has to be a victim who suffered some harm. So according to these clowns, somehow nebulously, though nobody was involved in it, uh, New Yorkers were suffered from a home, uh, suffered from a remote harm. But then again, all that happened was at the higher value, they get more tax off of the properties. And you have all of these businessmen telling them, screw you, New York, we're moving our operations elsewhere because you could do that to us. See, nobody's thinking about it. You've got this mess down in uh, Georgia with Mammy Fanny. Yeah. And. She, I mean, I've never seen anything like that. I can only think of one case in 50 years where some fool, dumb crook, incriminated himself worse than she did. She walked in there, stormed through the back, put her hand on the hip, doing that snake charm thing with her head. I decided I'm going to testify. And the judge even asked, are you sure, ma'am? We're discussing whether or not there's any need for you to take the stand. I decided I'm going to take the stand. (laughs) And she gets up there, and by the time she gets through, she has revealed multiple counts of tax fraud, tax evasion, money laundering, uh, other instances of criminal fraud, ethical violations, and she's got five, about to get six ethical complaints against her. Now it's surfacing that she's been part of the money laundering exercise. People are releasing campaign tapes of her when she got elected saying she's going to take sex out of the equation. It is a disgrace that the DA here has been sexually dealing with his employees. And guess what? Came out that she was sexually involved with the previous DA when he was her boss. And now what do we find? from the testimony of the father, John Floyd, who I happen to be acquainted with. He's not a bad brother. I don't know what happened to his daughter. But anyway, what goes on is we find she's shacking with somebody who's a DJ who supposedly has a daytime government job. Dad doesn't know what it is. And unbeknownst to Dad, she's sneaking out at night with Brother Wade. And see, she's in charge, so she doesn't have to submit 
any okay she gives to any claim she makes to anybody. And we discovered that although the matter hadn't even been set for trial, he had already received $720,000. She doesn't make but 210000 a year for a salary. The Chief Justice of the Georgia Supreme Court makes 260000 a year for a salary. The Attorney General of the United States handling all of the country's business makes 360000 the president of the United States makes 480,000 and this dude has been paid 720,000 and the case ain't even started. Wow. Dang. And How she's that, whining man? from the pulpit, white supremacy, keeping a sister down and the sister got a right to make mistakes. Wait a minute. What's supremacy? You mm -hmm. are a constitutional officer. There's nobody over you. So who do you answer to but yourself and every four years to the voters? So who is the supremacist? You live in a majority black county, Fulton County. The majority of the town county is black. The sheriff's black. The chief of police is black. All most of the judges are black. You are the DA. You are black. You don't answer to anybody. Where is the white supremacy or the black stupidity? See, that's what we're talking about. So are you laundering money? Because all of the people in Fulton County are coming up saying all this money has been stolen, embezzled, and ripped off, and seven and a half million dollars to chop down the backlog, and all of the black men shitting up in jail for several years, never been formally charged, and the money supposed to go to getting them prosecuted or at least out of jail or finishing up their sentences. And nobody knows where the seven and a half million dollars uh, went to. And people started saying she spent it to go after Donald Trump, but she's denying that. Or did you take the money and you pay the cash back? You said to pay Mr. Wade back his credit card usage. And is that money that you just paid him so he can hand it back to you a way of laundering it so he can record it? And then you're dumb enough to bring in an affidavit from a waiter in Napa Valley, California, that your tab at a restaurant was over $400. You paid that in a 20% tip in cash. And you have a constitutional responsibility to document that and receipt it. So there's $56,000 that was paid out undocumented and it's not receipted. She withdrew, she said, $50,000 from her 401k for her campaign committee. And when you do that, it's subject to taxation. So you're supposed to report it to IRS and pay taxes on it. She didn't. She gave an affidavit to IRS that she couldn't afford to pay cash for the $8,400 lien on her residence. But then we find out, hey, several things she had fifteen thousand in cash laying around the house so she made a knowingly false statement to a federal agency or federal official that's a felony wow. we also have a thing where she said i gave fifty thousand to my campaign but the only documentation is nineteen thousand what happened to the other thirty one thousand that's a violation of state law and then her campaign gives her $8,400, which just happens to be the amount of the lien, and she testifies to that, dumb crook-wise, under oath. So IRS is going, whoa, wait a minute. This is getting real crazy up in here. Yeah, so she up. indicted some school teachers on RICO, some rappers on RICO. You remember that one? Yeah, she start. indicted them because of the language they were using and things they said in their recordings. Well, it looks like she's committing RICO violations a damn self. And on wow. top of that, she's got, I think it's all five or six ethical complaints now levied against her. She might lose a law license. She might go to jail. The judge issued a 54 page order on the thing and noted that if anybody on the defense applies for a gag order against her, he'll grant it, but the defense doesn't want it because she keeps running her mouth and making it worse for herself and revealing more and more about 
what's going on with their case. Now we find out she was meeting with Biden and Kamala Harris in Washington, D.C. to plot out what they're going to do. She's been talking to people about it. She's bragged about it. And on top of which, you know, she's got an arrest warrant against herself now. Comes out of Maryland because she recorded the only black defendant in this bunch. She recorded his conversation with his lawyers, which is against Maryland law, and she didn't disclose it. So now she's got a felony warrant. So it's over. No, we got a phone. Oh, we can't hear you, Judge. Hey, Judge, you're cut off, brother. We can't hear you. The phone call. Oh, Judge, we can't hear you, Judge. One instead of a sapphire. That's the character out of Amos and Andy. A disagreeable alpha that had a bad attitude and always had too much mouth for the situation. Anyway, if you want to get prepared for this new hot summer coming up, which will probably be real hot since we keep having these record heats coming along since we have so-called global warming, prepare yourself to do some things outside. Now, there's this miraculous product. It's called barbecue. Judge Joe Brown barbecue, JJB, Judge Joe Brown barbecue, bbq.com. Go there. You can get seasoning, hot and spicy sauce, mild and spicy. You can get chicken links, hot, mild, smoked or raw. You can get beef links, same way you can get that beyond beef. Vegan meat substitute is real good, by the way, in the same ways. You can get all kinds of stuff, recipes. Uh, I've been working on this for 40-some years. Chef Damon, who is Beyonce's personal chef, he's been working on it to clean it up so you can get it at Whole Foods and Sprite, Sprouts and that kind of stuff. And if you're in L.A., go to the corner of 79th and Western, to D's original takeout grill, and you can get all of this stuff on poultry, fish, beef, pork, goat, lamb, uh, anything you want. And it's great stuff. We've got Tiffany Haddish is an investor. There's a beautiful sister named Michelle Duke. She collaborates with us on whiskey. And by the way, try it. It's called Poppies, P-A-P-I apostrophe S. Uh, the sister's got a distillery, and it's based on some moonshine her granddaddy did down in Mississippi, and it's as smooth as Jack Daniels, Blanton's, Booker's, it's Knob on. Creek. It's, it's great that. whiskey. Yeah. And we do the meat packing through the only USDA-certified black female-owned meat packing plant in California and it operates out of Compton. So we've got black folk involved in the financing of the thing, the operation of the thing. And not only can you go on jjbbbq.com and get it, you can go on Amazon. And if you have Amazon Prime, the shipping is free and they'll get it to you in a couple of days. Order all you want, just do it quick because they keep running out sells pretty well and there's a guarantee it'll be the best you've ever tasted unless your granddad knew how to make the stuff up on your grandmama but this is one of the things men tend to do better we do barbecue yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. now the other thing is the real dana on yeah. mondays and thursdays you can get the real Dana and it's on YouTube. Now, when we get real risky, they try to jack us up, make everything happen wrong and they demonetize us a lot. Yeah. But you know how that goes. That's uh, what we call misinformation is being kept down because we don't push the party line for the mammy fanny types and the mammies mm -hmm. and those bobblehead chicken enemies like Al Sharpton. So we don't, 
you know, when we get off track, as far as the rest of us, uh, rest, not the rest, but the rest of certain somebody's are concerned and talk real politics, uh, real meaning, then they want to cut us back. But check it out. And we also do X space, which we are about to do right now. Let's see. Yeah. It's that time. So, All right. We appreciate it. I got to go. This has been Judge Joe. Catch me when you can since I'm yes, the one that ran. Get back. I give no slack as I go into my get down. Brown is in town. If you look at me closely, you'll see there's space between the soles of my feet and the planet Earth because I do not walk. I float and I fly. Yes, sir. Put out your hand. Touch me. Verify that your senses deceive you not. I've become manifest in the flesh as promised and prophesied. And ladies, bring your favorite part of your body nearby to whatever your device is, and you will feel a satisfaction of all your inner quiet, loud, quiet, loud, and exotic vices. So Joe is on the go, and you've had him on this show. So catch me when you can. I'm the one that ran. Joe Joe is out of here. We appreciate now, it as always. Thank you. Okay. Have All a right. good one, guys. Call All right, you too. Again. All right. Yes, sir. Later on.